so dear students this video has been made especially for from the point of view of determining the time period of a pendulum of a very large length so that's what uh, we will be doing that is we will determine the time period of time period of pendulum of pendulum of a very large length pendulum of a very large length right pendulum of a large length now what is the meaning of a pendulum of a large length it's very simple when you say that uh, you are talking about pendulum of a very large length that means you say that the length of the pendulum is comparable l is comparable to the radius of the earth okay so the length of the pendulum is really large comparable to radius of the earth now what way the this derivation would be different from uh, that for an ordinary pendulum now it's very simple to understand in an ordinary pendulum we always show weight mg of the bob acting vertically downwards vertically downwards when you say vertically downwards it's like this this is how you will say mg always vertically downwards in case of i am talking about a pendulum whose length is very ordinary and tension would be like this t correct but but here that would not be the case because as you as you push the pendulum this side for example this is a very large pendulum remember that uh, now the pendulum will probably take a situation like this and now the weight will be acting not vertically downwards rather it will be acting towards the center of the earth and that is what makes the entire difference in the derivation okay so i would like to repeat once again when you talk about a ordinary pendulum you give any amount of deflection or any amount of uh, push to the pendulum and mg will be always acting in the vertically downward direction whereas for a large pendulum mg will be always acting towards the center of the earth as i have shown in the figure and as a result of that the answer will change so let's go ahead further let's start doing the derivation so i have drawn the earth this is uh, the rigid support from where the pendulum is suspended and i have pushed the pendulum from its equilibrium position so this is how the bob will look like let us say this is the bob or this is the current position of the bob in this position the forces acting are first i'll draw a vertical line okay and let us say this angle the angle by which your bob has been deflected is or by the string has been deflected is theta and remember that theta is very very small because only if you consider theta to be small then you can say that the oscillations will be like linear simple harmonic motion so because we are we are talking about we are drawing we are deriving the uh, time period assuming linear shm we have to assume theta to be very very small okay now the second thing is the weight so now remember that the weight of the bob will be acting towards the center maybe probably you can show the weight uh, like this this is how the weight mg will be acting so this is nothing but mg and tension as usual we know that it will be acting along the string along the string and towards the point of suspension this is nothing but tension let us call this angle as say phi let me draw a vertical line passing through the bob so if this angle is phi then definitely this angle has to be phi because you know alternate angles right if this angle is theta then this angle also has to be theta again by the same reason that is alternate angles and let the horizontal displacement of the bob from its mean position be called as x so i would call this displacement from the mean position as x right now <clears throat> let's start doing the derivation so we know there are two forces acting on the bob one is tension t towards the point of suspension and one is mg that is along the radius towards the center of the earth now if i ask you for example what is this length this particular length or if i give some names for example let me call this point as o 
let me call this point as a and let me call this point as c so if i ask you what is length oa then it is very simple length oa will be equal to l that is the length of the string and length ac will be equal to r that is the radius of the earth right now it is very evident from the diagram you can make out that tension can be resolved into two components one would be towards the one would be towards the mean position like this and the other one will be vertically upwards like this so we know that this is the adjacent one so this will be t cos theta and the one which is towards the mean position that would be t sin theta let us do the same thing for mg mg can also be resolved into two components one would be uh, vertically downwards that would be this would be mg cos phi because it is adjacent to the angle phi mg cos phi and the other one which is towards the mean position that will be equal to that will be equal to mg sin phi so from the diagram it is very clear that the two forces which are trying to bring the bob back to the mean position are t sin theta and mg sin phi so i can call them as restoring forces so rather i can write i can write the net restoring force acting on the bob that is fr fr will be equal to i'll call restoring forces fr will be equal to fr will be equal to so the two restoring forces which are trying to bring the bob back to the main position are mg sin phi and t sin theta so i'll write here minus in the bracket mg sin theta as well as mg sin phi both are oh sorry as well as i'm so sorry mg sin phi it is so it is mg sin phi not mg sin theta right <clears throat> so mg mg sin phi mg sin phi plus t sin theta so so now this is equation number 1 i'll call this as equation number 1 now restoring force can also be written as minus kx so minus kx is equal to minus of mg sin phi plus plus t sin theta plus t sin theta right now now what we can do after this is we can we can write yeah so minus kx is equal to minus of mg sin phi plus t sin theta now the problem is let's uh, let's try to uh, you know replace t by something else so if you see the diagram carefully you will come to know that the upward force acting on a is t cos theta and the downward force is mg cos phi and both of them balance each other so i can write i can write t cos theta is equal to is equal to mg cos phi i hope you remember that that theta is very very small this is phi i hope you remember that x is very very small and if x is very small if x is very small i can certainly write theta and phi are also are also very small are also very small i would like to repeat once again why i have to uh, take x as very small because we are talking about linear shm and for the motion of the pendulum to be considered as linear shm angle theta has to be small or x has to be small so phi will also be definitely small and we know that whenever angle theta and phi are small or whenever angles are small the value of cos is approximately equal to i can write cos theta is approximately equal to cos phi will be approximately equal to 1 right so i can straight away write t is equal to mg and this t equal to mg can be substituted in this equation when i substitute i'll get minus kx is equal to minus bracket mg sin phi 
plus T plus sorry T can be replaced as mg plus mg sin theta. Now we have two right angle triangle. We have two right angle triangles. One on the top and uh, this upper one and the, that is O. Let me call this point as D. This is I'll call as D. This point. So O A D and uh, and A D C. So in if you talk about O A D sine theta is x by l and if you talk about A D C sine phi is equal to x upon r. So I can substitute those values. I'll get minus of m g in the bracket sine phi is nothing but nothing but x upon r whereas sine theta is nothing but x upon l so finally this minus will get cancelled not only that x everywhere will also get cancelled x will get cancelled right so let's cancel x so finally you'll get k as k is equal to m in the bracket g in fact uh, this uh, g can also be taken as common so g by r plus g by l right so finally i will write m by k is equal to m by k this whole thing will go in the denominator will be equal to 1 by g common bracket 1 by r plus 1 by l we know that we know that time period can be always written as time period can be written as t is equal to 2 pi remember this is time period not tension right t equal to 2 pi root of m by k and i already found the value of m by k let me substitute here and i'll get the answer as answer of t as t is equal to 2 pi root of 1 by g in the bracket 1 by r plus 1 by l this is the final answer so it is 1 by r plus 1 by l this is the final answer for time period this is the time period of a very large pendulum large pendulum means the pendulum whose length is comparable to the radius of the earth apart from this there are some more things which you should remember like some special cases let us say case 1 case 1 if the length of the pendulum is equal to infinity if the length of the pendulum is infinity and if you substitute here you come to know that 1 by l will become equal to 0 so you will get time period as t equal to 2 pi root of r by g we know the radius of the earth is 6400 kilometers and g is 9.8 meter per second square so if you solve this you will get the answer as 84 0.6 minutes so this is a standard result and it you, it is advisable to by heart this formula because of lot of reasons you know and you should also remember the situation case 2 case 2 that is if if length of the pendulum is equal to radius of the earth in that case you can write l also as r so 1 by r plus 1 by r will become equal to 2 by r and if you rearrange the terms you will get 2 pi root of r by 2g which will be approximately equal to 60 minutes or you can say approximately 1 hour okay so this is all you need to know about a, about a very long pendulum from the point of j main from the point of JE main as well as from the point of uh, NEAT. So thank you for watching the video and uh, thanks a lot. Keep watching for more such videos.